Affinity Photo supports masking of its adjustment layers and live filter layers. If you are coming from other image editing software, you will find that the masking convention differs in Affinity. I'll show you some typical examples and best practices to make the most of the flexibility that masking offers. On my first example here, I'll add a curves adjustment with Command M on Mac, Control M on Windows. I'll use the picker option to click drag on an area of the eye here and push the tones up. Then close the dialog. Now at this point, I would usually look on the layers panel for some kind of additional mask that I can manipulate. Adjustment layers in photo, however, inherently have their own alpha channel, which means a separate mask layer is not required to modify the alpha. There is no initial indication of any kind of alpha channel or mask here because the adjustment is currently affecting the whole image. However, if I go to layer invert, this will then invert the curves adjustment alpha and a pure black thumbnail will now appear adjacent to the adjustment icon. This means the adjustment is currently having no effect on any area of the image. If I now switch to the paintbrush tool using B and bring the hardness down to zero for a soft edged brush, I can paint into the bird with pure white and the adjustment will now begin to affect these areas. If I were to paint too far down the bottom here, I can easily switch across to black by toggling the primary and secondary colors. I can do this on the tools panel here, or I can use the X key. Then I'll tidy up the mask area. I can see the thumbnail on the mask has now changed. The white areas are where the curves adjustment is allowed to render. Here is another example. This time I will add an adjustment with an active selection and demonstrate how masking works with this approach. First, I'll make sure the background layer is selected. Then I will switch to the selection brush tool. And I'll enable soft edges on the context toolbar. Now I'll increase the brush width slightly and quickly paint into the flower to make a selection of it. With the marquee selection active, I'll then go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and add a white balance adjustment layer. Now that I no longer need the selection, I can clear it with Command D on Mac, Control D on Windows. Notice that the white balance layer already has a mask thumbnail next to the adjustment icon. If I increase the white balance slider, the effect is now restricted to that area I selected previously. I'll bring the slider down to around 18% and close the dialog. Now let's say I wanted another adjustment to affect the rest of the image and not the head of the flower. Rather than trying to create a new selection, I can hold Command on Mac, Control on Windows, and click on this mask thumbnail to reload the selection I created previously. And now I can go to Select, Invert Pixel Selection. This now selects the rest of the image and excludes the flower. I'll add a Vibrance Adjustment and once again, Deselect. I can now bring the Saturation Slider down to reduce the color intensity of the background areas. Before moving on, I will also just point out that you can solo or isolate masks to view them. To do this, hold Option on Mac, Alt on Windows, and click on the mask thumbnail. The document view switches to a grayscale representation. White is where the adjustment can render, and black is where it cannot. When painting on masks, Using an opacity lower than 100% will allow you to graduate the transition between black and white. For example, I'll use 5 on the keyboard to set my brush opacity to 50%, then paint around the edges of the flower. I can layer this effect up, so I'll go around the edges again. Now the desaturation will gradually transition into the edges of the flower. To exit solo mode, I can once again hold Option on Mac, 
Alt on Windows, and click the same mask thumbnail. Before switching to the next example, I will just make sure my brush opacity is restored back to 100%. Rather than masking with manual brush-based methods, you can also use channel information to mask adjustments and filters. For example, I'll switch across to the Channels panel, right-click Composite Blue, and choose Create Spare Channel. This will create a channel based off the blue channel intensity of the image. I'll right-click this and rename it to Blue. Now, I'll go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Brightness Contrast, and on the Dialog, I'll bring the brightness down and the contrast up. If I only wanted this adjustment to affect the blue channel intensity, I could then right-click this blue channel I just created and choose Load to Brightness Contrast Adjustment Alpha. The rendering of the image will change, and the foliage detail down here will no longer be so dark and crushed. Moving back to the Layers panel, I can now see the blue channel intensity being used as a mask. Hiding the adjustment will reveal the initial image. Then I can bring the effect of the adjustment back by showing it. Altering the brightness and contrast of just the blue channel intensity allows me to affect the sky area more so than the foreground detail. Soloing the mask will confirm this. The sky detail is almost full white, whereas the foliage detail is near black, meaning the adjustment will have more of an effect up here and less of an effect down here. Finally, I'll show you how this masking process works exactly the same way for live filter layers. On this image, I'll add a live clarity filter by going to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Sharpen, Clarity, and bring the strength slider all the way up. Then close the dialog. This creates a nice structural enhancement effect on the mountain detail, but doesn't look very good on the sky detail. With this image, it would be easier just to paint into the areas where I want the clarity filter to render. So, I'll go to Layer, Invert, and as with the first example at the start of this video, I will now see a black mask thumbnail. I'll switch to the paintbrush tool, and make sure I'm painting with white. Then, I'll just paint into the foreground areas where I want the Clarity Filter to render. Once I'm finished, I can quickly hide, then show the Clarity Layer to see the result of my manual brush-based masking. So, there we go. A few examples to show you how to mask adjustments and live filters in Affinity Photo. Once you realize that a separate mask layer isn't required, you should find that the process becomes more straightforward when performing these localized adjustment workflows. I hope you found this video helpful, and thank you for watching.